Okay, so we're going to have a look at this week's um, debug challenge. So if you open up week one uh, underscore debug challenge one, um, that Python script file contains two functions. It contains one called split word in two and it contains main. Um, so let's have a think about what this function is trying to do before we run it. Um, well, if we have a look down here at main, uh, what we can see is that there is a word to split, um, which in this case is faster. Um, and we're calling the function split word in two, where we're passing in word to split, and that's returning results. Um, and result comes back as a, um, a tuple. Um, so uh, basically um, a list of two items. Um, and we're going to print part one and part two to the screen. So that should split, uh, the expected output here should be this. So we should see on the screen part one equals fast and part two equals tur. So uh, I can see straight away that Spider is a bit unhappy about something. Um, so if we just hover over this little um, exclamation mark in a triangle here, um, our code analysis tells us that this expected an indented block of code. Okay, so that's that suggests we're going to have a problem when we run this code. So let's let's just try um, by clicking on the, the green triangle at the top. Um, and as you can see, what's happened is a an error has been thrown by Python. Um, so what we can see is that's an indentation error um, expected an indented block, which is pretty much what Spider is telling us here. Um, so what we can do is we can go up to the to the line above. Um, and that tells us where the problem is occurring. It's occurring here in line 22. So if we, if we click on that, it will take our cursor directly to it. So that's quite useful if you've got a very large file. So what we know is that for every function, and particularly anything where there is a semicolon, we need to indent the code underneath. Python enforces white space rules. So if we select all of that text and indent it, um, it looks like that problem's disappeared. Um, but it looks like potentially there's another problem down in here in main. And if we hover over our um, little exclamation mark here, it again tells us there's a problem with indentation of the code. And we can just double check that by running the code. Um, yes. Okay. So here we have an indentation error again, this time on line 37. Let's click on that. And that takes us to where Spider is suggesting there's a problem anyway. So let's indent all of this code because that's, I think, what the problem is here. Okay, great. Oh, so this has thrown up potentially some other errors. So we can see lots of um, lots of little um, exclamation marks in the margin here. Um, so this is quite good. This is quite a nice way to debug your code step by step. Um, what we'll do is we'll run the code again and see what happens. Um, so this time we've got a name error. Um, so that's saying there's something wrong with one of the variable names we've got in the code. Um, and it's saying, oh, probably didn't mean to call it to spit. Um, we've got a variable called to spit and it's saying that's not defined. So if we, if we click on this, it says it's on line 23. It takes us to here and here we've got some code that says length equals len of to spit. But actually it turns out to spit actually isn't a variable we ever defined. What we probably meant to do was use to split, which is the keyword argument that we passed in, which is the string that we actually want to split into. So I would suggest that's just a typo, which is quite common. Uh, okay, so our little arrow disappears away there, but we've still got some left. Um, looks like there's a problem with half length and there's a look like there's a problem with this variable half down here. So let's run the code again. Um, so again, we've got a name error, and this time it's saying the name hearth has not been defined on line 26. So let's just put our cursor on hearth. Uh, and you can see suddenly spiders highlighted both instances of the word half there. And it's just showing us where, where that's been used within the code, which is quite useful to, to zoom in on where the problems might be. Um, so what's going on here? Well. We've got um, part one equals to split. Um, and then we've got this uh, 
slicing thing going on here. So we're looking for the, the first half. So this is basically going from zero to half. Aha, so the problem is that actually this is another typo. So actually what we meant to use was half length rather than half. So we've been busy thinking away how to solve this code and actually forgetting a little bit about what we called the variable representing the half length of the word. So I'll change that to half length and I will change that to half length. Excellent. So I think that's that's potentially solved. If we just undo these changes a second, let's get rid of that and get back to the the problems that Spider was seeing. If we hover over the uh, Spider's saying there's a potentially a problem with this line here. So let's have a quick look at that. Um, so that tells us that the local variable half length is assigned to but never used. So that's another good sign that there's probably been some typos within your code. Because why would you create a variable and then never use it? So let's just correct that. So let's hope that's fixed everything because all spiders errors have gone away. Ah, but it hasn't. So this is a nice indication that Spider doesn't always tell you the problems of your code. It's very good at picking up formatting problems, such as failure to indent code and hitting Python's white space rules. And it's good at picking up things like typos within your code or variables that have never been used. But it's not always very good at picking up logical errors within your code. So for that, you'll need to run your code and you'll get a runtime error. And the information about that runtime error is what you can use to debug your code and find what the problem is. So here we've got a type error. Uh, a slice indices must be an integer or none or have um, an index method. Hmm, a bit of a confusing um, output there. So let's go to line 26 and see what's going on. OK, so that's where we are splitting our code. So that's quite confusing. OK, so. I wonder what's going on. So what, what we're going to do now is we're going to use the print function um, to help us debug what's happening in our code. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to print out the value of half length. I'm just putting a bit of, a bit of string formatting in there um, just to remind me what I'm doing when I look at my, um, my output. So I'm going to run that again. We'll still get the same error, but if you scroll up, we've now got this additional line that's come out here. And that says half length equals 3.0. And if we look back at the error, it's saying this is a type error. A slice indices must be an integer. Um, so what the problem is here, actually 3.0 um, is a float. It isn't an integer. If it was an integer, it would just be half length equals three. So we can confirm that by putting in a second print statement um, saying type of variable equals and then again just put a bit of formatting there just to help me understand what's going on you don't always need to do this and I'm going to call the type function on half length and have I got enough of the parentheses yes I have so let's run that code same error again but now we'll scroll up and we've got a new line of code here so I would say this is the problem. So type of variable is float, which is not what we were after. We were after type int. So what we need to do is we need to convert this float into an int. And we can do that very simply with the integer function. So that's the wrong one. It is this, okay. So we're gonna convert length divided by two into an int. And then if we run that, we get our answer. So we can see that the half length is now three, and that means the type of it is an integer. Uh, and then we get our answer, which is fast, part one equals fast, and part two equals ter.